the fond memory, I think, was like when it was getting cold and we would, <laughs> we'd get changed here, go to Melwood train, get soaking wet and muddy and sit on the bus on the way back with no air conditioning. So it, all the windows were steaming up and stuff like that. So, yeah, um, it doesn't happen nowadays. I can't imagine Jürgen and, and the team getting on a, yeah, a steamy bus. First of all, tell us what you know about the event today and what you're going to be, your role in it. Um, the, the, the event SC Johnson, obviously Liverpool's partner, um, are, have brought in 200, I say they've brought in, 200 uh, school kids from the local area to educate them on recycling. Um, obviously more importantly, recycling plastic uh, in this case. And um, what's my role in this? Well, I try and do my bit. Um, I'm not going to pretend I'm perfect, but at the same time, I think with the, the kids, it's not about perfection necessarily. It's just about educating and understanding how they can do better. Um, why am I here? I mean, what my bit for, for those guys is say is sort of help spread that word, but why am I here? More importantly is that I think that for Liverpool Football Club to be doing something good for the community, there was an Everton fan in there. And the reason I knew it is because he had an Everton show. But if that young lad leaves here today better practised or better educated on how to... Um, do better for himself and the community, then Liverpool Football Club have done something very important for that one person. Hopefully 200 and the family that they're going to go back to uh, spread the word. And when a football club is doing a positive thing for the community, I'm all on it. And now these are school children, they won't have seen you play. So Well, they might have done. You know, and we've now got 15 year olds playing <laughs> in the Premier League. That were Oh, don't even making, start me on that. They were that. only born right. in 2007. <laughs> yeah. so just going back to your days of coming through as a professional, take us back and tell us about your first memories starting out when you made your debut. I'm sure you weren't 15. But I wasn't, though. No. Um, my debut, I was 20, and I didn't know that I was going to play the week before. I mean, that was the first game of the season uh, for, for Watford. But, um, yeah, then it was just like phew, straight into first-team football, Two years at Watford with, I missed a few games, I think I got an injury or something like that. Um, and then 1992, making my Liverpool debut against Nottingham Forest. First live game on Sky. Um, the start of the Premier League. Crazy, yeah. You just... were there throughout the Premier League, you were the fifth most um, appearances in Premier League history, still have that record. James Milner. You know, <laughs> So just that Liverpool debut, tell us about that. When did you find out that you were going to be starting that game? And, you know, what were your thoughts? Were you nervous? Were you excited? Did yeah, you it, was a, yeah it seems to be a, a trend in my career. Um, the week before, I didn't know I was going to play. Uh, I joined the club, obviously, to play, but Bruce Crobler was number one. And um, if I'm not mistaken, he had an international match that weekend and went and played the international match, which meant... I started the game, and uh, was I nervous? Of course, yeah. Um, playing in the Premier League, the, the top division. I mean, it was literally the first weekend of the Premier League, so um, playing for a new club, away from home. I had a few friends from Cardiff come up to the game, which was actually mentioned in commentary. Um, but, uh, yeah, losing the game was disappointing, but I didn't, I don't think many people realised how important First of all, that first week was, but that game against Nottingham Forest being um, a live televised game on satellite TV, it was the, the changing of football forever. So I was nervous for the game, not for the fact that it was going to explode into to what we have now. And when Bruce got back from his international duty, did he tell you well played or was it a kind of, you know, was he supportive as a, as a that, bro, I used to watch Bruce when I, because I'm a Luton Town fan, so uh, as a kid, I would see Bruce playing at Luton. When I was an apprentice at Watford, Liverpool came down and it was a sunny day and Bruce didn't have a uh, baseball cap. And I ran up to the Watford shop to get him a baseball cap. Brought it back down, but it had Watford on it and he kind of looked at him and went, oh, I can't wear it. <laughs> I was going like, oh no, I've, I've upset my, my idol almost. So uh, to see, see Bruce when I joined the club was amazing. He was an amazing, or he is an amazing man. Every time I see him, we, uh, we get on and have a good old chat. Um, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a wonderful, a wonderful partnership. In those early days at Melwood, you know, obviously we're middle of middle <laughs> Melwood now. But what was it like for you? you know, what was the first impressions? Who was it that impressed you, and what took you by surprise? 
um, the first impression. I think it was getting changed here at Anfield, jumping on a bus and then driving to Melbourne to train because it was literally the pitches and that was it. Um, I think the most vivid impression would be, oh, because we didn't have a goalkeeping coach either, so it was kind of like I just something different for me because at Watford we had a, a goalkeeping coach, so a, quite a lot of things were, were different in that sense. Um, the fond memory, I think, was like when it was getting cold and we were <laughs> we'd get changed here, go to Melwood, train, get soaking wet and muddy and sit on the bus on the way back with no air conditioning, so all the windows were steaming up and stuff like that. So, yeah, um, it doesn't happen nowadays. I can't imagine Jürgen and, and the team getting on a, yeah, a steamy bus. Just, just changed slightly there. Um, so just moving to modern day then, obviously Liverpool's goalkeeper now, Alison Becker. Best in the world, yeah. Best in the world, is that mm. your opinion? I mean, he hasn't got I'm as many a, Premier League clean sheets as yourself yet, but... When he gets close, I hope he moves and plays back in Brazil or something, um, just so he doesn't beat me. <laughs> yeah, but no, no, I'm a I'm an Allison fanboy. What, what is it that you know as a, as well, a the, goalkeeper that you really are impressed by? Um, the way he plays is fine. He's the best. Kicks it, catches it. He, he, he saves it, he does whatever he needs to do. But I'm um, fortunate enough I've met him and I've interviewed him, um, was it last season? I've met him before that. And he's just such a wonderful person. It's a bit like Bruce in a way. I don't know why Liverpool, how Liverpool do this, but I like Bruce's goalkeeping style and therefore you kind of like the person even though you don't know them. When I joined the club, he was as good as the, the person I thought he could be. And Alisson's the same. You look at him play, it's like, wow, what a guy. He looks like a really nice guy. Um, then you get to meet him and have a chat with him and all of a sudden it's like, he is good. So, yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan. And any other goalkeepers that you are also a fan of in the Premier League at the moment? Obviously, Queen's Yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Queen, uh, yeah Queen's an interesting one because I, I haven't, I've not had an, uh, an opportunity to interview him at the moment, uh, at Tenal, but I have seen him around when I've been up to the training ground or sometimes at matches and... Uh, there was one game here after the cup final where I, I was in the lift with him having a chat and I just started talking to him about the cup final. And he was just such a lovely guy. Um, but he's behind Alisson. I mean, so what, whatever happens in the future with him, but he's a lovely guy. But the, uh, the other guy, which I'm a other goalkeeper, which I'm a big fan of, is um, Edison. And Alisson and Edison are very good friends, as you'd imagine, obviously being in the same national team. But... Uh, yeah, and their relationship and their, the way that the two guys are is just like, they, they, yeah, you're the best for a reason. And it's not just saving shots. Just finally, um, what next for David James? You've been into management, obviously. Um, it took a slightly different route into management, and I'm sure that was an amazing experience culturally and you know, a learning for you. What's next for David James as the, as the man? Uh, whatever. Um, I have to mention one thing about my first experience in India. So we're in Kochi, in Kerala, and I was invited to the inaugural meeting of the Liverpool Supports Club, where we went into the hotel and they all started singing, You'll Never Walk Alone. And I still remember it to this day. So you guys out there, amazing. Um, what next? I just, I enjoy life. I mean, things like today, the opportunity to um, help the SC Johnson, in this case, in Liverpool, of course, with, uh, with regards to educating the, the next generations um, on how to be uh, better at recycling and stuff like that. If I, you know, I do a lot of things around sustainability and recycling, so yeah, I just, I just want to be able to help whatever that is in whatever capacity.